Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about Fold3. Fold3.com is a website that was acquired by Ancestry back in 2010 and mostly has U.S. military records but has some other hidden gems. And so today we're just going to do a brief introduction to the website, um, how you get it, how, what's available on it, some of the best ways to search and see if it has the records that you need. So let's go ahead and dive in. First, let's just talk a little bit about Fold3 um, just in general. The website launched in 2007, and then as I mentioned, it was acquired by Ancestry in 2010. So from 2007 to 2010, they were working really hard um, to negotiate contracts for access to records, specifically to military records here in the United States. Um, and then when Ancestry acquired them in 2010, in early 2011, we rebranded the website. It was previously known as footnote.com, and then we rebranded it as fold3.com just to focus really heavily on that military theme and the contracts that they had for digitizing and putting online those military records. Currently, there are more than 430 million records available on Fold3, and there are still new records being added. So it is not a static website, it is continue, they are continually adding new records. Um, specifically, we'll talk about the War of 1812 pension files a little bit later. If you have the World Explorer Plus membership to Ancestry, so, <coughs> excuse me, if you've got, um, it's, a, it's called World, there's World, and then there's World Explorer Plus. Those are the different levels of membership. Actually, it's US World and then World Explorer Plus. If you have World Explorer Plus, a subscription to Fold3 is included in that subscription, along with your full subscription to Ancestry and a subscription to newspapers.com. What that means is you should have received an email from Fold3 stating that you have a subscription and giving you instructions about creating an account. Um, it does require a separate login. It is a separate website completely. Um, it is still, I mean, it's a completely separate entity, um, even though it falls under the Ancestry umbrella. So it, is, it does require a different login. So if you haven't received that information, um, you're going to want to go to fold3.com and uh, I'll show you where to find the information to contact them to get that set up. You also, if you are a current Ancestry subscriber, you can get half off a subscription to Fold3. So if you just want to maintain your US subscription or you don't want to upgrade to World Explorer Plus, you can still get a subscription to Fold3 for, for half off of the regular subscription cost just by nature of your subscription to Ancestry. Again, if you just give them a call, give them your Ancestry uh, membership information, your username, uh, they can look that up and then give you that, um, that discount. Let's talk about what records are available on Fold3 and, and how to get there. So if you are on Ancestry.com, we have this new widget here on the top right hand side which is products and services. And one of the buttons there is to, will take you directly to Fold3.com. So you don't have to remember it, you can just click on it there. Or you just go to Fold and then the number 3.com. So this is the website. This is what it looks like. Um, we have a search box right here at the top uh, with an advanced, some advanced search options if you uh, want to go to a more advanced search. Over here we have a scrolling um, set of widgets. Most importantly, keep an eye out for this Fold3 Training Center. They've created a great set of tutorials and videos that'll help you uh, get started using their website. And then they also have information about some of their specific collections and then they try to highlight um, things, military things uh, in, in history, usually close to the time or the date of that particular event. You'll also see a scrolling um, or an incremental count of records. As I mentioned, they are still adding records to their website. 430 million is our official count, but if you look here, we're almost at 440 million records now uh, on, that per on this particular website. So. Um, so you can just do a search directly from here, and I'll, we'll walk you through that, or I'll walk you through that here in just a minute. 
or you can, if I scroll over here, you can browse records. Now this is a lot, if you're familiar with the card catalog on Ancestry.com, it's kind of a similar concept. Only here, the records that are available on Fold3 are actually broken out by conflict. And so you'll see we start with uh, half a million records, Revolutionary War records. Then we have uh, 7.6 million records for the War of 1812. If you just work your way down, 7.4 million records for the Mexican-American War, the early Indian Wars, 43 million Civil War records, a uh, lot of records generated in that particular conflict, 5.4 million Spanish-American War records, 18 million World War I records. Now that might not seem like very many. Um, keep in mind, and some of you are aware of this and some of you are not, that in the 1970s there was a big fire in the personnel records office in St. Louis. And so about 80% of the Army service records for anyone who had served in World War I, World War II, or the Korean War were actually destroyed as a result of that fire. And so there aren't as many records available as we might hope that there were, um, or as there might have been otherwise, for uh, the conflicts World War I and World War II. Um, and so 18 million, like I said, may seem like a really low number, and that's part of the reason. 70 million records for World War II, 18 million for the Korean War, 18 million for the Vietnam War, and then about 10,000 other records for some of the, um, conflict, the recent conflicts, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation New Dawn. Mostly those are going to be casualty lists. And then, uh, and this comes as a surprise to some people, Fold3 also has some non-military records. So uh, they were operating as an independent company for three years before Ancestry purchased them. And so they do have some records that are the same as records that, are, that exist on Ancestry. So things like the 1860 and 1930 U.S. Federal Census, the Dawes enrollment cards, some naturalization records. But they also have some unique records. And so if you look right here, kind of in the center, there's a link to browse all records. And if you click that, it'll take you to a complete list of all the records that are available in any given category. So here we have, for example, um, they have city directories and they have some city directories on Fold3 that are not available anywhere else. And so you can come in here and if you know you're looking specifically for a set of city directories, say um, in Pennsylvania, maybe specifically out of Philadelphia, uh, you can then look for the particular year um, that you're interested in and go directly to that set of images. So 660 pages on this particular set of images. Now I'm just going to walk you through that again because the, the user experience here is a little different than maybe what you might be used to. What we have here is we have these rolling categories. So if I come back over here, it resets it, okay? And then when I select any category, it's going to say, well, which publication are you interested in? Well, I'm interested in city directories. And now it's going to ask me, you know, for a specific state. And so I'm going to click on the state. And then it's going to ask me for the specific city. And then it's going to ask me for the specific year. And so what I'm doing is I'm just um, browsing, essentially, down to a specific city directory or specific set of directories. Um, and then once I get there, I have my images that I can then click on and go through one at a time. Or if I know I'm looking for somebody, especially in a city directory, later in the alphabet, you'll notice each of these images um, actually has a name. And usually that's going to be the first name on the image, which I think is fantastic because then I can just quickly scroll to the place in the alphabet where I need to be and open up that particular image. So um, really easy navigation that I love. I think it's fantastic. Um, their, their images are, are great. You can print the images, you can download the images, or you can actually save those images to Ancestry. And so hopefully, um, you can, if, you, if you find something that you need to attach to your tree, you have the option of, of doing that as well, which is just terrific. So let's come back out here. So let me just make sure we covered these things. So the major focus is 
going to be U.S. military records, and the majority of the records on the site are going to be based around that. But then there are some non-military records and some that are unique to Fold3. So some things, some newspapers, some city directories, some other small-ish databases um, that you're not going to find anywhere else. So be sure to browse those and take a look and see if they are useful for you. you you can search or browse, and so we've shown you the browse structure. Let's talk a little bit about how to search the records on Fold3. So we're going to come back over here to Fold3. You're going to notice um, there is a search button right here at the top. You can go ahead and just click that. Now, the search is super, super basic. Because the majority of the records are military records, um, and even those records that are non-military records, we're looking at city directories and newspapers, uh, the variables in search are not uh, really all that big. So we can say we're just looking for a name. So for example, I can come in here and I can type in a specific name and I can just click search and see what comes up and it can be that simple. Now the way that the search results are returned, let's make my screen a little bigger here, the way the search results are returned is very similar to the browse structure, which is why I went through that first. What's going to happen here is you're going to see a, a list of categories or you can toggle to a list of titles over here on the left hand side. In the center, you're going to see your filters. So this is going to allow you to filter down to a specific year range. Now what happens is this, the filter is preset based on the search results. So I searched for Frederick Cowan, that's my great grandfather. There are 180 matches with just that name. All of the records that match that name fall within this year range of 1846 to 2012. Well, I happen to know that my great grandfather died in the 1940s. So I can just use this little slider bar and drag it right back to um, another year. Or I can actually just type it straight into this box. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and click update. And you'll see here I only got rid of two search results. I'm now down to 178 matches. But that allows me to, um, to work with my search results a little bit. Now, he wasn't born um, until the 1880s. And so I can go ahead and update that. Now I'm down to 169 matches. And see, what you're, what you're doing is you're using these filters um, in a really simple way to just control your search results so that you don't have to look through lists and lists and lists of things. The other thing you'll notice is that as I set a filter, a particular filter, it actually adds it to the search parameters up here. So I've searched for Frederick Cowan and now it's telling me I've searched for 1880 to 1950. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit here, you're going to see I can also um, filter by location. Now it does tell me that there are 16 records that have no location listed on them. Just like it told me up here, there are two records that have no date listed on them. And so I have to be really careful. I don't want to exclude those records just because they are um, they have less information. So I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. I happen to know that this particular great-grandfather uh, lived in California. I know he also uh, was born in Ohio and he was stationed in Texas for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and mark all three of those states because I'm looking for military records for him that might have something to do with one of those particular locations. And again, what you're going to see happen here is those search parameters are going to get put up here so that you know what you searched. And now I'm down to 40 particular search results, which seems to me like a pretty manageable list. Now I could keep going, okay? Um, I could look for uh, different kinds of search results. I could also, there's this filter here at the bottom that I kind of love, um, only see stuff that was added recently. So if I had already searched the Fold3 database for this particular great grandfather, and I'd found the records that I was interested in, and then um, I attached those records to Ancestry and went on my merry way. Well, then I come back three months later, and I wonder if Fold3 has added anything new. And it's really easy to forget sometimes what records we've already looked at. This allows me to just say, you know what, I only want to see the stuff that's new in the last three months. There's nothing? Okay, right? I'm not going to waste my time.
So it allows me to really quickly just see what's new, um, to set some of those parameters, uh, and to just kind of play around with those search results. Now, one of the things you can also do is you can also do all of that right up front. So if I come in here to search, I can click this advanced button and it will fill it, it will give me fields to fill in that information from the very beginning. So I can come in here um, without messing with the filters or the, sli or the sliders or whatever. I can type in Frederick Cowan from 1880 to 1950 um, and then I can put in you know California and um, Ohio and Texas and click search and it allows me to do that. Okay, um, the location search is a little tricky. If I just come back here, it's easier to use the filters on the particular locations. I'm gonna go like this and like this, and now I'm down to those 40 records again. So here are those 40 records. Now, I can then further filter by a particular conflict if I'm interested in only looking at specific um, military records for specific conflicts or like I said I can come over here to title if I'm only looking at specific databases uh, with only 40 search results might be easier just to quickly look through them those search results are going to show up in this third column over here now the default sort is by relevance meaning what is what most closely matches what you searched is going to show up at the top you can also sort it by uh, the date on the document. So it's going to put the World War I draft card uh, first and then the 1930 census and then the World War II draft card and so on. Uh, I can do newest stuff first or I can do uh, stuff added to fold three um, most recently at the top of my list. Relevance is an okay way to sort it. Um, document date, oldest to newest, also pretty good. Uh, however, whatever works for you, okay? Then I can just quickly go through uh, these search results to see if any of them pertain to my particular ancestor. Now, when you find a specific record that is for your ancestor, uh, go ahead and click on that, and it's going to slide across and actually um, open up uh, another record. Okay, so so you'll see here the little arrows are going to show up that allow you to go back to your search results, so you can toggle back and forth between viewing the search result and uh, viewing all search results, okay? So it's just that little arrow there on the side of the page that you're gonna use for navigation. Now, when you get to the page, you can view it larger and that will pop it out into a full browser experience, okay? You can also, just from this particular screen here, um, zoom in. Um, so you can click that, click the image or click the view larger button. Also, if you scroll down here, you're going to see some other buttons. Okay, here are your options. You have the option to save it, to save the record on Fold 3. So in Fold 3, you can save a record directly, which will allow you to create like a gallery of, a media gallery of records. There are also memorial pages, and I'll just talk briefly about those. Anybody that served in the military, um, you can create a memorial page for them to be placed on the honor wall, and then you can just collect all the records for that person and attach them directly there. You also have the option to share. You can share that out via email, uh, through social media, or bookmark particular items. So those are just some of the options from this screen. However, when you get to this screen, where you have the full image. Remember, you also have the option to save directly to Ancestry. And so what it does is, when you're logged into your Ancestry.com account, you can come in here, uh, pick the tree, and you can start typing in the name of the person, and then you can select that person from your tree and save the record from Fold3 to your tree in Ancestry, okay? really, really useful uh, useful information to be able to do that, um, to be able to link those two things together. Now, there are also, um, just to the side of the image, so when you're viewing the full image, you're going to have, again, this little blue arrow bar, and you can pop that out, and there's a few things that you have here. Uh, if you have uh, information to add about this record, okay? So, for example, this is a, a list of 
army registers from uh, through 1969. The specific one is for 1909. Uh, and so if you have additional information or if the OCR on this was read incorrectly, uh, you can add annotations or comments, um, you can add connections, you can suggest corrections. It also, uh, here in this side panel, will give you the source information, which all genealogists know is super important to know where this information came from, um, how it was acquired, uh, information about how and when and where it was created. Okay, So the source information is also available in that little side panel. You can get to it that way or you can get to it uh, by just clicking this little about image button. Okay, So lots of little navigational things. One of the things I would encourage you to do on Fold3 and actually on, on most websites, Ancestry.com, Newspapers.com, is don't be afraid to click on things. Be willing to just click around and see what happens. Um, if I click something, what does it do? Um, you know, you're not going to break anything um, it, just by clicking on things and exploring exploring things. And so um, just click on things and see what they do for you. We do give you the opportunity to download or print any of these uh, images as well for your own personal family history. And so you can spend some time doing that. And when you're ready to go um, back to your search results, you can just click the back arrow. Or um, if you know, for example, you want to do further searches or browsing through further directories in that particular database, you can click the little uh, breadcrumb. This is what we call a breadcrumb trail up here uh, and get back to a previous um, screen. So that is how you search the records. Again, you can just do a basic name search and then use the filters that come up or you can do an advanced search and see what other records um, to narrow that down by time period, by, by location. Uh, you can actually go directly into a specific title. If I do that, you're going to see here it is going to, if I click on one of these, it is going to, again, filter my matches down to just that specific database. Now, because these are check boxes um, instead of radial buttons, I can actually check several of those to look at search results for a few things at once. Okay, And again, it will just adjust the number of search results you have over here in this third column that you need to look through. And you can sort them uh, by any number of ways. So, so Fold3 is pretty easy. Uh, it does have um, some really great information. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, if I didn't, I will now, um, one of the coolest things that they are doing right now on Fold3 is the War of 1812 pension files. Those pension files um, are currently being digitized, but they are being uploaded as they are being digitized. So instead of waiting until the whole thing is complete, um, they're being uploaded as they're being digitized. These particular records <coughs> are being digitized in conjunction with the Federation of Genealogical Societies and the National Archives, and it is um, being done uh, through donations. So if you go to um, to donate to the War of 1812 pension files, every dollar that's donated, Ancestry matches, and then we get these records digitized a lot faster. Because that's the way that we're digitizing them, because the, the money is coming from donations from many of you, these records, you'll notice, are free. So every once in a while, you'll see that some of the databases here on Fold3 uh, have a little free tag on them. That means you do not have to have an active subscription in order to access those records. Um, it also will show you here on this database page, you'll notice a current record count so that you know where we're at. We're 59% complete with this particular project. 72,072 images were added this last uh, during the last month. In this particular collection, the records are actually being added alphabetically um, by state. And so I can browse to a specific uh, location. If I come in here, you'll see we're up to M uh, in Alabama, okay, um, or L in Louisiana, or L in Alabama, okay, Georgia, 
uh, right, whatever the state might be, okay? Looks like we're in the L and M range. So those are being alphabetized by state and then alphabetically. And so you can see how far we get. And if your name starts with W, like some of mine do, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I just need to go donate some more so that we can get more digitized faster of those War of 1812 records. So we've talked about search, we've talked about browse. Um, I mentioned the honor wall briefly again. That is just a way where you can create a page on Fold3. It's a public page that anybody can see that honors someone specific who served in the military. And then as you find records uh, about that person, you can attach them to that memorial page and you can upload anything else that you uh, might have, photographs, documents, information about them in their life to that honor wall. It's just a really neat way to honor those who have served um, and some who continue serving in the military. Well, that is all I have for you today. I hope that was useful. I did mention it was just a brief introduction. There is so much more there for you to explore, so please feel free to click around and see what happens. If you have questions about how Fold3 functions, uh, please feel free to uh, ask in chat or uh, leave a comment on the YouTube channel. We will respond to those as necessary. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.